Hello guys, welcome back to our introduction to programming with Python series. So in this tutorial, we're going to continue with the different data structures that you have looked uh, that are in Python. So we have looked at so far, we've looked at how to work with tuples, how to work with lists, and how to work with dictionaries in Python. So there's one more last thing we need to cover when it comes to data structures in Python, and that is uh, sets in Python. So if you're coming from a mathematical background, we did something like discrete mathematics, you probably know what a set is, right? So a set is just a collection of, of unique elements, basically, an ordered collection of unique elements. So a set can be defined as an ordered collection of unique element where each uh, element is unique and immutable and cannot be changed so hence we cannot we cannot have immutable uh immutable data structures such as lists or dictionaries or other sets within a set so a set can only consist of immutable subs and immutable data types in python for example a list uh sorry um a, a string uh, a number a float or something like that that's those uh, are, are mutable and can only be uh, const uh, immutable and can be inside of a list but you can have a list uh, we can have a set inside of a list and we can have a dictionary or another set inside of an, a set right so a set must only consist of unique and immutable elements okay so just uh we we're just go let's dive into the coding section and look at it so i'm just going to create another file uh, up here and this is going to be uh part underscore two one dot pi right if i'm not mistaken yeah part 21 dot uh, part 21 dot file Okay, so once I have that done, uh, we're just going to go ahead and begin to code. So let's look at how to create a set in Python. So how, or let's say creating a set. So just say creating a set in Python. So how do you create a set in Python? So to create a set in Python is quite very, very simple. So let me just uh, show you something. So let me just do this. So if I may ask you, what uh, what data type is this? Is this a dictionary? Sorry, let me just uh, and do that again. So let me just type that properly. So is this a set? Is this a dictionary or what is it in Python? So uh, I want you to just write this code out and just print out and check out its type to let's see what type it is. So let me just print out the, the type of X and I'm going in here, just uh, change my directory into my basic folder and then I'm going to simply run that. So we're going to part 21.py and then run that. So that's the type of dictionary. So this in here is a dictionary in Python. So it is not a set in Python. So this up here is called a dictionary in Python. And you have looked at this in other videos, right? So that's a dictionary in Python. So that's not a set in Python. Good. So once we have that done, because uh, in normal like mathematics, this is how we write sets, right? We like we use a curly braces and put elements inside of it. But if you come to Python, it's a bit different. So if you didn't do discrete mathematics, well, it's all fine. But if you did a bit of discrete mathematics, you know that we write uh, sets with curly braces, right? In uh, if you're writing them on a notebook or something. But in Python, this is actually a dictionary, and you have just checked the type of that. So how do you create a set in Python? So I'm going to create a set in Python. I'm just going to say set. It's like this so just by doing this we have created a set in python right so by using the set keyword so if i print uh, the type of y uh, what do you think we're going to get you're going to get the type is of type set good so that's how you can create a set in python right now uh, the funny thing is if i go down here and i'm going to go ahead and create events i'm going to create a variable called events and i'm going to use like the curly braces like you had for dictionaries and i'm going to put in some stuff in here so i'm just going to put in some even numbers Okay, and then finally, right, so we can put in 10. So I'm just sorry, I'm just coming here and put in uh, 10. So once I have 10 inside, I can go ahead and check the type of 10. So I just say print and I say the type and pass in events, uh, sorry, events, uh, events just like this. And if I run the code, let's see what we get. So we get back, it's a set. So good. So this is a set, right? This is a set in Python. This is how you, another way of creating a set, but this is a dictionary in Python. Well, it may be a bit confusing to you because this is a dictionary, but down here, this is a set. Yeah, so that's, it's a bit confusing, but that's how it is. So a dictionary has key value pairs. So if you're keeping key value pairs, this will be a dictionary. Or if you, if you leave it like this, it's an empty dictionary. But once you fill it in with values that are separated, a comma, it becomes a set, right? That's this, this is like we write sets in on a notebook, right? So that's how you can create a set in Python. So uh, it's a bit tricky. That's this how you can create an empty set. And this is how you create a set with elements inside. So this now is a set, but if it has key value pairs, it becomes a dictionary, right? So that's a bit confusing in Python, but yeah, that's how you can create a set and stuff like that. So once that you have the set, and again, the set can have only a, a collection of unique elements, right? So if I go down here, let me just delete all of this. Now, once you, you guys understood it, let me just uh, delete this as well. I'm going to go ahead and print. I'm going to print events, right? So events is just our set. And if I run the code, you know what you get, right? You just get back the set back. So let's say that I go ahead and add in uh, two and uh, four. So you already have two and four already, right? So it's duplicate values, right? So you can see these are two values are duplicates, right? But I said the set consists of only unique elements. So what, is, what if I print out the set, you can see that the, the unique elements have been deleted and that's the advantage of a set. 
So I said to just return to you, uh, do, delete the, all the duplicate elements. That means that the second, uh, the second occurrence of an element to override its first occurrence, basically. So that's how a set is in Python. Uh, basically this consists of unique elements so good so now that you agree that a set consists of only unique elements you can't have duplicates elements within a set a set can only consist of unique elements so once you have that done let's look at how to update uh, update a set so now we have, we have created a set the set has this element let's say that you want to add another uh, number into this the list of even numbers right so they say dot add and you can go ahead and add in let's say we want to add in another even number is 12 right so if i write the code again we can uh so let's print it after adding it so just say go ahead and print events so events just like that and if i run the code now you can uh, we can see i'm um, just uh hit control c on that so i'm just hit control c so control c uh clear the terminal and then run the code again so now okay I think I have a bug. Okay, run the code again. Now you can see we, we have added in 12. So that's how you can update a set and add different elements to a set that you have. So if you add element that already exists, then it uh, it will just over only one of those elements will be chosen, right? Because a set must have a set of unique elements. So you can see that uh, 10 is not added because 10 already exists within it. So it checks before adding stuff to it because if the stuff already exists, then there's no point of adding it to it. So that's how uh, you can add uh, or update a set. And then we can update a set is by using another list. You can update set using a list. So you can say events dot update, and then you can say uh, update, and you can go in here and pass in let's say a list, or you can pass in a list of numbers. Let's say 14, uh, 16, and I can also pass in another list if I want. I can say 18 and 20. Yeah, these are all even numbers, right? So if I run the code again, you can see now uh, we have added stuff. But let's go ahead and actually print it so you can see that. So print events uh events right so if I print events and i go here and run the code now you can see we have added uh 14 and 16 and 18 and 12 and all these are coming from a list right so that's how you can add uh, or update elements instead of a set either by adding uh, individually or by adding using another collection like a list right but you can add a list to uh, you can add a list uh into a set because a list is uh mutable right so it's a list is not immutable so uh, there's uh elements of a set must be immutable okay so once we have that done, let's look at how you can delete elements from a set. And to delete elements from a set, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, delete all this. Uh, we can just leave this one for now. I'm just going to go ahead and say um, delete elements. Uh, elements, right? So to delete elements in a set, is, uh, we have a couple of methods we can use to do this. We have the pop, we have the clear, we have the remove, and also have the yeah discard. So let's say the discard. So I'm going to say events dot discard. And I'm going to go ahead and say discard two. So it's going to go ahead and remove two from this set that we have. So if I run the code again, uh, let me run, let me print the set after, sorry, the either, yeah, the set after deleting uh, the number from it. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the code again. So now you can see, uh, let me just go ahead and make a typo there. Today I'm just making kind of typos, so sorry for that. If I run the code again, you can see we have deleted two from our set and the set uh, has no two anymore, right? So that's how you can delete elements from a set. And then you can delete element from a set is using the remove method. So you can say events.remove and then you pass in what you want to remove. Let's say you want to remove 20. So if you run the code again, uh, let's print it after removing it. So print events, uh, events. Okay, so once I have this, I'm going to run the code again. I can see now 20 has been removed. So the first time two has been removed. And then on the other line, uh, 20 has also been removed. So you can see the set decreasing in size as we go down. Yeah, so that's how you can another way you can delete elements from a set. And you can do that is by using the pop method. So the pop method simply removes the last element and returns it to you. So you can go ahead and actually print it out if you want. So and also, uh, yeah, just say events dot uh, pop and just run, call that so pop is a method and you have to call the method and simply what it does it removes the last element from the list from the set and simply returns it to you okay you can see now we remove four uh remove four and then return it right here four right so four and then you can see we have returned four here so you can also print the set after removing that four so if i print events and then run the code again so you can see now our four is not there anymore instead of our list so pop removes the element right so good so once we have that uh, there's another way you can also delete element from a set and basically just delete every element from a set you can use the clear method so you can say i can just say actually just say um events dot clear just like that and you can just print the set after deleting uh, every element from it that should be an empty set right so now you can see we have, we have deleted everything and just written an empty set and this is how an empty set looks like so an empty set looks different from a dictionary so this is an empty dictionary and a set, an empty set is this okay so that's a bit of a difference so uh, you might think that this is going to be uh, something like this but without the numbers inside but it's a different that would be a dictionary and we talked about that earlier on 
Okay, so another way you can also let's say that you want to delete the set from the memory, you can use the, 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 the delete del word keyword in Python. You have looked at del already. Okay, so uh, good. So once we have that, you have learned how to uh, add elements to a set, create a set, delete elements from it, and all of that. Let's look at the different stuff we can do with set. So let me just go back the slide and let's look at the different set operations. So if it comes to the set operations, we have mainly three different set operations. The first one is a union. Like in mathematics, you can find the union between two sets, right? It means that you take elements from set A and combine with elements from set B as long as they are, you, as long as you don't uh, you don't have duplicates. And um, intersect, you can find an intersection between two sets, right? What is in set A and what is in set B. And the difference between two sets is what is in set A but is not in set B. Right, so that's basically it. So this can be a union whereby you take, you take you pick the middle part, and uh, yeah, this can be like a union. You pick all the parts from uh, both set A and set B, and then intersection whereby you pick only the middle section, what is in set A and set B. And the difference between two sets is just what is in A and what and is not in set B. Right, what is in set A and what is not in set B. So I don't want to go deep into the mathematics and all that. So let's just just create a set and uh, see how it works. So I'm just going to go here and just say union. So let's look at the union of two sets. So I'm going to create a set. I'm going to create set A and set A is just going to be a list of numbers. So it's going to be 2, 4, uh, 6, 8. Right? 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then I'm going to have another set. This is going to be set B. And set B is just going to be another set. And it's going to have 8, uh, 10, uh, 12, and uh, 14. So you can see that 8 is duplicate between set A and set B. So let's try to find the union between set A and set B. So you can say A underscore union. Uh, if you did a bit of discrete mathematics, you're probably familiar with this. So A union B is going to be equals to, uh, we're going to say A and then the pipe symbol and B. So it's going to return to us a union of A and B. Basically, what is in A and what is in B combined. Right? So we're going to take everything 2, 4, 6, 8, and it's going to add it to 8. But but 8 is a duplicate, so only one of the 8 will be there. And then you add it to 10, 12, and uh, 14. Right. So let's go ahead and actually print it out and let's see. So print... Uh, a underscore union b so what if you print a union b let's see what we get so i'm just going to go back clear the terminal uh clear my terminal and then simply run the code again so you can see now we got back the union between those two sets which is this right here okay so you can actually delete this other code so that you don't get confused or so delete this part here so once we have that that's basically it so if i run the code again now you can see the union between the two sets now eight only appears one because eight is, is in both uh, a and B. So that will be an intersection, right, between A and B. What is in A and what is in B? That's an intersection of A and B. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the mathematics. Uh, let's just look at that another way of uh, finding union uh, of a sets in Python. So you can say A underscore union, uh, union underscore B uh, underscore, let me just call it underscore two. It's going to be equals to, I'm going to say A dot union and then you pass in B. So it's going to uh, return to A union B. And that's another way of, do, of uh, doing it out. And you can also go ahead and print it out. So print uh, A underscore union and then B2, right? So if I go ahead and run the code again, we should get back the same output. So these are the two different ways you can find an, uh, a union of uh, two sets in Python uh, by using either the pipe symbol, right? A uh, union B, we are using A pipe symbol and then B. Or you can use the method uh, method of union and passing the, or what you want to find union of, right, which is B in this case. So, uh, good. And the uh, one thing is that the ordering doesn't matter in this case. Whether you do B union A or A union B, you will still get the same answer. So, if I go back here and just say uh, B and then go here and say, um, uh, say A here. Yeah. So, if I go ahead and run the code, you get back the same result. So, the ordering doesn't matter, but in some section, the ordering matters. But for now, this does the ordering, ordering doesn't matter. And this is a simple question if I what if I do a, a sorry B union B, so what do you think we'll get? So, I'm just going to run the code again. We just get back B, right? Because we are looking for what is in B and what is in B. It basically, it's just a set B. Yeah, so that's basically how you can work with uh, finding unions in Python. So another way, another thing is the intersection, right? In this case, what is in A, what is commonly in A and what is commonly in B, that is 8, right? Because 8 is in A and 8 is in B. So that's the intersection of A and B. So you can just do intersection. Uh, it's a bit of discrete mathematics, but I don't want to go into much into it. So let's just say A underscore intersection, uh, intersection underscore b and what is a intersection b you can do this by you can do find this by using two different ways you can do a and b like what's in a and what's in b like it's very uh python makes it look very simple like just like normal english right what's in a and what's in b that's intersection of a and b so you can just go ahead and print 
So using this syntax is going to return to you what is commonly in A and B, right? So we can go ahead and actually just print it out. So we're going to say A underscore intersection B. And if you run the code, let's see what we get. We get back 8, right? Because 8 is in A and also 8 is in B. And that's the intersection. Uh, this is one way of doing it. Now you can also do it the same thing using the method approach. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this right here and just simply paste it here. And I'm going to simply call this underscore 2, right? 2. And I can copy it and you're going to print out. And you can just say... uh you can use the method a dot intersection um intersection and then you pass in b so it's going to return to the intersection of a and b which is just eight so these are the two different ways of finding intersections of a of a of a tuple in python so that's basically it and uh even here the ordering doesn't really matter so you can also say a and then pass in here also b so you will get the same result because basically at the end of the day it's just going to return to what is commonly in a and b and what if you put a what's a in b intersection b that's going to return to what's in b and what's in b and that's the whole basically they set b right so yeah that's basically it uh let me just return this okay so let me just put it this way okay so uh yeah let's look at the one thing which is the difference between two sets the difference between two sets is what is in set a and it's not in set b or what is in set b and it's not in set a so uh, here the ordering matters a bit let me just show you how it works so difference uh difference of two sets so difference of two sets so i can just go here and say a underscore div okay div b a div b is going to be equals to a minus b that's it and you can just go ahead and print out uh a underscore div b so let's go around the code again you can see what we get so if i run the code you can see uh we get back what is in a and what is not in b you can see that if i go back in here uh these numbers are in a but not in b right but uh eight is in both a and b so it's an intersection of the two right so that's basically it i don't want to go too much into the mathematics but it's going to return to you what is in a and what is not in b here the ordering matters so if i go ahead and say b and then a i uh, will get back a different thing so if i go ahead and run the code again so if i go around the code again you can get the different answer because this is going to return to us what's in b and not in a right so what is solely in b right and this is this this part right here and that's what we get back right if i run the code again you can see that's what we get back yeah so that's how you can find difference of two sets okay so once we have that done uh we can move on another way you can find the same thing is by using uh the method you can also use the method approach so in differences the ordering matters right so in other intersections and union the ordering doesn't matter but in difference the ordering matters so another way you can find this is by using the method approach right so we have look at the method approach so if i go ahead and say uh, a uh you can say dot difference and I can pass in B, it's going to return to me the same results. So if I go ahead and run the code again, we can get back the same results. Yeah, good. Uh, so here the ordering matters again. If you change this B and you change this to be A, the ordering matters. Okay, so if I change this back to A and run the code again and then run the code, you can see the ordering matters. Okay, okay, good. So once we have that done, uh, one thing you can also do is uh, checking, the, checking the symmetrical difference of two sets. So symmetrical difference of two sets. I really don't want to go into the mathematics of, the, of this, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how it works. Okay, so if you are, are wondering what a symmetric uh, symmetric difference is, you can just Google it out. But I'm not going to go ahead and uh, discuss the mathematics behind it. So this is not like a math class; it's more like a programming stuff. So I'm not going to go into the math. Basically, what it returns what's in A and B, but not in both. Basically, it what's in A and B, but not in both. Okay, so let's let's, let's look at this and just say A underscore uh, sys underscore B is go sys let's say sys underscore difference is a systematic difference of uh, b is going to be a and then you say pipe okay this is a so i have to use capital a a uh, raised to pipe symbol and say b right we have that right there so once we have that there we can go ahead and actually print out the result and you can print a underscore sys and then b and then you run the code again let's see what we get so it's going to return to the systematic difference of a and b so that's how you can check the systematic difference and in here let's check if the ordering matters so the first round we get this output let's check again uh, what's in a let's change the order and see what we get so change the order and let's see what we get so you can see that the ordering really doesn't also matter in this case right so that's that's how you can check it and now we can check it by using the method approach right so we have this uh at symbolic approaches and also have the method approach you can just say sorry or you can just go uh, here and say uh a dot systematic uh, let me just say dot systematic difference and you pass in b and then you write the code again it's going to return to you the same output 
yeah so that's basically it for sets in python so that's how you can work with sets in python so whenever you want to store a unique element then think of consider consider using a set in python so uh that's basically it for sets in python so in the next video we're going to go ahead and look at let me just show you on the slide what you're going to look at in the next video we'll actually begin to look at functions in python and how to make our code more reusable okay so uh thanks for watching and see you in the next section